In this video, we find out what pi is and have a look at how to determine the circumference of a circle. A circle is formed when many different points are plotted the same distance away from a specific center point. If we keep going like this, we will form a solid circle. Now, all these points are the same distance away from that specific center point, And this distance is called the radius. Then we can also draw a diameter. A diameter is a line that is drawn from the edge of the circle through the center to the edge of the circle again. So, a diameter consists of two radii. The perimeter of the circle is then still the length or distance you travel when you move right around the circle to end where you started. For the perimeter of a circle, we have a specific name and that is the circumference. But, because the circle does not have any straight lines anymore, we need a new formula to determine this circumference. Before we can have a look at this formula, you need to know what pi is. Pi is a value that represents the ratio between the circumference and diameter of a circle. And because the value of this ratio will be the same for all circles of all sizes, it is also given a symbol. So instead of writing down the value for this ratio, which is an infinite decimal, you can make use of the symbol pi. But what is the value of this ratio? When you take the diameter of a circle and fold it around the circumference, you will see that you need 1, 2, 3 diameters, and then another extra part of the diameter to move right around the circle. This ratio of the circumference and diameter of a circle is an infinite decimal. When you are doing calculations without a calculator, you can use the rounded value of 3,14. But where you are allowed to use your calculator, you can make use of the pi button and ensure that you use the 100% correct value. And now that we know this ratio, we can, with a bit of algebra, manipulate this ratio by multiplying the diameter on the left to get the formula for the circumference of a circle. We also know that the diameter consists of two radii. So if we substitute diameter with two radii, we get another option of formula for circumference. So the circumference of a circle will always be equal to two times pi times the radius. Examples. Calculate the circumference of the following shapes. The first shape is a circle where the diameter is given as 15 meters. Therefore, I'm going to choose to use the formula that has diameter in it. So, to determine the circumference of the circle, I'm going to say pi multiplied by my diameter. And in this case, that diameter can be substituted with 15. So, this diameter is 15 times pi. And of course, pi is now that infinite decimal. Rounded to two decimals, this will be 47,12 meters. In the second circle, the diameter is not given, but the radius is given as 3. So, if you choose to use the second formula, which is 2 times pi times the radius, we can substitute the radius with 3 centimeters. This will give us 6 pi. Rounding this to two decimals will give me 18,85 centimeters. You could have also chosen to use the formula pi times diameter. And the diameter consists of two radii, so the diameter will be 6 centimeters. So you will end with the same answer of 6 pi. In the third example, we do not have a complete circle anymore but now only half a circle or a semicircle. This means that the circumference of our shape will only be half of the original circle circumference. So to calculate the circumference, I'm also going to start off with my formula pi times diameter. 
but now I'm going to divide this by 2 because I only have half the circle. The diameter is given as 8 centimeters, so we have pi times 8 and then divide it by 2 to get to a value of 4 pi. And I'm going to choose to round this to two decimals again, and that will be 12,57 centimeters. In the fourth example, we have a similar shape to example 3, but instead of only going around half of the original circle circumference, we travel on the diameter back to the point we started. So again, we're going to take our original formula of pi times diameter and divide it by 2. And now we still need to add that diameter that we moved. So we still need to add 8 centimeters to get back to the point where we started. This means we have 12,57 plus another 8. And that will total 20. 57 centimeters. And then instead of half a circle, we can give you a quarter circle. Here you need to realize that the diameter is not given, but the radius is 10. And to go right around this shape, we're going to take a quarter of the original circle circumference, then add one radius to get to the center and another radius to get to where we started. So to get the circumference or perimeter of this shape, I'm going to start off with my original formula of 2 pi radius and now divide this by 4 because I only have a quarter of that circle. And as I've mentioned, we then still need to add a radius of 10 and another radius of 10. So I'm going to add 20. Now we can substitute the radius with 10 centimeters. And if you calculate this using your calculator, you will get a value of 35,71 centimeters. In the final example, we have a combination of a rectangle and a semicircle. It is very important to realize that the perimeter of this shape does not consist of a full rectangle because the fourth side of the rectangle is on the inside of the shape and doesn't form part of the perimeter. So the perimeter of this shape consists of the three blue sides of the rectangle and the semicircle. So to determine the perimeter of this shape, I'm going to start with the four centimeters, then add six centimeters and another four centimeters, and then I need to determine the perimeter or circumference of a semicircle. And for that, we have pi times diameter divided by 2. And the diameter of the circle is then, of course, also 6 centimeters. This means here we have 14, and then we need to add pi times that diameter of 6 divided by 2. So the perimeter of the shape is 23 comma four two centimeters.